Alrighty, everyone, welcome to my final capstone dissemination on the regulation station. That is what I called my sensory motor based program that I implemented at the Boys and Girls Club of Yellowstone County, specifically the Bear Family Clubhouse. My name is Carla. Sorry about that. Okay, presentation outline. Bulleted here is everything we will go through today. We will talk about the purpose of the project. We will go through a description. We will go through a summary of the outcome and my data analysis. I will talk about the sustainability of my project, lessons learned, and next steps. I'll leave time at the end for questions. First, let's talk about the literature that guided me to doing this project. I've always been passionate about self-regulation, especially in our youth. Uh, I found a lot of research supporting that self-regulation can be altered to contextual factors. Things that I was interested in that reflected that the data reflected was adverse experiences and stressors can directly impact self-regulation. Another article stated that there was an increase in evidence that connected low socioeconomic status and emotional and behavioral difficulties. This is important to note because at our after school program, specifically in Yellowstone County, 29.6% of the families there reported as being low SES. That is where the gap existed. The after school programs did have resources, but they currently did not have any ongoing staff education or areas for the children to self regulate or increase their knowledge on self regulation. I also included some literature that just supports the benefits of after school programs in general. It's important to talk about 45,000 Montana students actually are enrolled in after school programs. That covers my literature and the gap. We'll go on to the need. My site mentor identified two main needs when I got to the Boys and Girls Club, one being the number of high of emotional outbursts of the members. At the Boys and Girls Club, they do call the youth their members. Um, the second one being the need for additional training for staff on how to deal with these situations. Based on those needs is when I started my educational modules and the idea of a sensory motor based area came from. When I was creating my project, I thought it was important to align it with the mission and the threads. I highlighted the parts of the mission that spoke to me, the first being expanding the knowledge about health benefits of occupation. This is what I did throughout my entire project. I was a huge advocate, not only for OT services, but just the health benefits in general of occupation and engaging in the things that we love. Thread 2 talks all about community engagement, and this is what I did through and through the 14 weeks. The Boys and Girls Club has a lot of community partners, so I was able to go out into the field and see these partnerships. Thread 4 talks about advocating. I was an advocate not only for our youth, but for our staff members as well. So the purpose of the project, my pur the purpose of my project was to create a sensory motor based program to increase staff education on self-regulation, excuse me, increased staff knowledge on self-regulation. These are my four objectives. I'll briefly talk about each of them. The first one being develop and implement the program. The second, educating and training the staff on the program. The three, collaborating with the staff at Boys and Girls Club on the existing program. It's important to talk about the resources that are available at the club. I was coming from an occupational therapy lens. Four is the evaluation tool that I used being the pre and post survey. I was very grateful to meet all of my objectives. So the description of my project, I broke it into two parts. The first part being the educational modules. I went through four categories with the staff, self-regulation, co-regulation, sensory and behavior management. When creating these, I wanted to one, be evidence-based, but two, I wanted to make these modules uh, relatable for the staff. I wanted it to seem that they could implement all of this knowledge in their day-to-day -day at the club. Part two talks about the cool down zone, which was the sensory motor based area for the members. This area was completely intentional from the floor to the privacy uh, picked out. The area was designed for our members to be able to emotionally and physically regulate. The last month at the club, I was able to watch the members actually utilize it. I was able to guide the staff with how to help members figure out when they need it, when they don't. Here's a photo here. We have 
a wobble cushion. We have a big Joe, which is our comfy bean bag. Now I'll talk through, I'll go through every week what I did. This is a summary of my process week by week. So week one through four was all about build, building rapport. I wanted to not only understand each member, I wanted to understand the staff and the organization as a whole. I gave out my pre-survey during this time. Week five through seven was when I, when I started to roll out my educational modules. This is also when I started to talk about the, co the cool down zone. Week seven through 10, again, continuing to educate the staff on the modules. Everything is kind of spread out because a lot of stack conflict would happen with pre things that they had already before me coming there or just scheduling conflict. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later on. So week seven through 10, continuing to roll out the modules. Week 11 through 13 is when I started to take more of a supervisory role um, at club. I wanted to make sure that the staff knowledge was being carried over into club. And the last week was all about wrapping it up, creating a wrap up forum to talk about what things went well, what things didn't go well. I wanted to make sure all questions were answered. And that is when I gave my post survey away. I'll quickly talk about each objective and how I measured them. The first objective I measured through that weekly timeline that I just went by, I would often refer back to that for me to try to stay on my own timeline. The second objective, I met weekly with my site mentor. Really, it was almost every other day we would sit down and talk about how the staff were taking on, how they were collaborating, how they were communicating, what changes we could make. Objective three, collaborating with them on existing programming. Two main things I want to talk about is the HILA and the Power Hour. The HILA is the high yield learning activities. This is the time where the program coordinators can implement some type of activity based on character and leadership, arts, sports, and education. They would often come to me for assistance on how to grade up or grade down their activities. And I would also give them that therapeutic lens on including every member with their HILA. Power hour is their education-based time. This is when members can either read, do homework, do crossword puzzles, math problems. During that time, I helped them run the spelling bee, which was really fun. Fourth objective was my pre and post survey. That's how I measured it. And now we'll just get right into the data analysis. I collected data in forms of quantitative and qualitative data. I'll start with quantitative, pre and post. I was able to compare, thankfully. The first one of the questions I asked was how they rated their knowledge on co-regulation and why. As you can see, they're leaning towards the left. The left means either adequate knowledge or no knowledge. Post survey after the educational modules, we're leaning towards the right. We did have one straggler who still felt like they had no knowledge, but most of us are towards the right, which means superior knowledge. Another quantitative uh, question that I asked was how they rated their knowledge on the effects of sensory tools. We are kind of in the middle, a little bit towards the left, mostly towards the right in the pre-survey. Post-survey, all the way on the right, which means superior knowledge. Qualitative data that I collected um, is I wasn't able to compare pre and post because I asked different questions. During my pre-survey, I wanted to just understand the staff better. So it, uh, significant data that I did find was 100% of participants said that connecting with members was their favorite part of the job. 87.5 participants said that having members cool down or calm down before addressing the behavior is how they dealt with conflict resolution. I think that speaks volume because this is before any form of implementation of the cool down zone. So that really drove just the need for having a designated area. Post survey. 87.5% of participants reported gaining a new strategy through the educational module, and 100% reported gaining a new strategy from the cool down zone. This is important, and a lot of the strategies spoke around conflict resolution, behavior management. We had a participant actually say that he learned how to regulate himself. So a summary of results and implications. Um, Results, we saw an increase of staff knowledge with co-regulation and sensory tools. We also saw an increase of staff collaboration and communication. Watching the staff collaborate through these educational modules was probably my favorite part of those 14 weeks. They really opened up and started to share more. Implications, this site would absolutely benefit from occupational therapy services. 
Uh, why? Because continuing the education for the staff would increase just the emotional and physical safety of the members. So sustainability and lessons learned. Sustainability of my project, they have access to every single material that I gave them or I researched on. It's all in a drive for them that they all have access to. Another thing on sustainability, some aspects that are non-sustainable is that some of the part-time staff are leaving. Thankfully, my site mentor has the ability to train them on some of the materials that I left with him, but that information will go with them. Uh, lessons learned, I learned it absolutely how to be flexible working, trying to coordinate with 10 individuals is hard. Uh, I really learned how to advocate. I felt like an advocate through and through, not only for OT services, but for every member there. Next steps, the cool down zone continues to be a resource for members. I'm very grateful for that. My site mentor, again, can carry all this information over through for the incoming staff that are being onboarded soon. And this is an open, this is a open for capstone possibilities. I feel like I only just started to lay some of the groundwork. My experience was extremely positive and I see so much potential for this site and OT. Here are my references and any questions. Thank you.